Hi everyone, in this video we will take a look at Sigma's two latest i-series lenses, the 17mm f4 DGDNC and the 50mm f2 DGDNC lenses. The Sigma i-series lenses can be summarized as compact, high image quality, fast and silent focusing, and perhaps the best feature is their incredibly robust and uniform exterior design, as they have a metal casing and a separate aperture control ring. This is of course no different with these two lenses, so let's start by looking at their exterior design. Both lenses are available in Sony E and Leica A mounts as we have come to expect. Both the 17mm and the 50mm lens is very solid and you can feel that they have weight, but they are incredibly compact. Even the 50mm easily fits in the palm of my hand, but then look at the 17mm, which is so incredibly tiny. Perhaps that's why due to their slightly retro but still modern design, you feel that these lenses have a motivational effect effect on the equipment and you would like to take them anywhere because they are small, have very good balance with the camera body and there is almost no compromise in image quality. Both lenses have two rings, one is an aperture control ring that can be manually adjusted by a third of a stop or plays in automatic mode if you want to adjust the aperture with the camera's dials. The ring cannot be locked separately but it requires a stronger rotation to switch between manual and automatic mode so I had no problem accidentally changing it. The other is the focus ring which is incredibly smooth to adjust and feels like similar fine movement to manual film lenses. Both lenses have a single switch, an AF MS switch, that allows you to quickly switch between the two modes. The 17mm has a filter diameter of 55mm while the 50mm has a diameter of 58mm and they come with their own lens caps and also very nicely designed metal lens hood. The 50mm has a cylindrical shape while the 17mm has a petal shape. As we have come to expect from i-series packaging we also find a magnetic metal lens cap in the box which I really enjoy using. Finally the lenses mounts are dust and splash resistant so you don't have to worry about using them in bad weather conditions. Now let's move on to autofocus. Both lenses are using a stepping motor for focusing which is not only completely silent but also incredibly fast and accurate as we have come to expect from modern Sigma lenses. In video mode both the 17mm and the 50mm lenses were extremely fast when tested with the Sony a7 IV or a7S III. My face was perfectly tracked and both lenses could focus quickly and accurately from close up to infinity even during fast movements. In my opinion Sigma has made the most progress in autofocus in the last two to three years and we have now reached a point where there is no difference in focusing speed and accuracy between a modern modern Sigma and the native Sony lens when used with the latest Sony cameras. Needless to say, the system worked perfectly in photo mode with both lenses instantly and seamlessly focusing from one point to another without any focus hunting or pulsing. Speaking of focus, let's take a look at the focus breeding of the lenses as this can be very important for videographers. With the 17mm lens I only notice minimal focus breeding which is actually negligible and I don't think it would bother anyone. However, with the 50mm lens there is a strong breeding that can be noticeable and even can be annoying during video shooting, especially with larger focus changes. We won't be disappointed with the image quality and sharpness of these lenses either. First, let's look at the sharpness and then move on to the different aberrations and distortions. Both lenses are very sharp in the center of the image, even at the widest aperture and we can confidently use them with an open aperture. The 50mm lens improves slightly slightly at f2.8 and f4, but there is not a huge difference. At f4 the 17mm lens is very sharp in the center and at f5.6 or f8 it improves slightly. At the edge of the image the 50mm lens is a bit weaker at f2, but it is completely consistent with the center of the image in terms of sharpness at f2.8 and especially at f4. The 17mm lens shows the same pattern, but the difference is perhaps even greater, so the image is noticeably softer at the edges at f4, but at f5.6 or f8 we get the same sharpness as in the center of the image. Therefore Sigma has nothing to be ashamed of, as we can see in reality that we can take beautiful sharp photos and videos even with open apertures using these new lenses. If we examine chromatic aberration we can see some distortions with both lenses, but I wouldn't say it is intense or too distracting. In 
extreme situations at f2 with an open aperture we can see some chromatic aberration at the edges with the 50 millimeter lens but the situation improves at f2.8 and f4 and finally disappears completely around f5.6 with the 17 millimeter lens we can only slightly notice chromatic aberration at f4 with an open aperture but if we stop down to f6.3 we can eliminate it completely in terms of vignetting we can see some darkening in the corners with both lenses but I wouldn't say it's significant with either lens. Starting from the 50mm f2 it gradually improves to f2.5 then jumps significantly at f2.8 and the corners become significantly clearer. It gradually improves in small steps up to f4 and from there on the image is completely clear from vignetting. With the 17mm lens we see more significant vignetting at f4 when the aperture is wide open but this is not unexpected with such a wide angle lens. Here the image gradually becomes clear from f4 to f8 and the vignetting disappears from f8. Regarding distortion the two lenses are not similar but we might have expected that due to their different focal lengths. With the 50mm lens I did not notice any significant pin cushion or barrel distortion, perhaps a slight barrel distortion when I was very close to the subject but it was so minimal that I almost wouldn't mention it. With the 17mm lens however we can notice significant barrel distortion especially as we get closer to the subject. Of course it can be easily corrected in post but it's worth paying attention to. The 50mm lens has a close focusing distance of 45 centimeters which allows us to get quite close to the subject but I wouldn't consider it ideal for macro photography unlike the 17mm lens which has a close focusing distance of only 12 centimeters. With the 17mm lens we can create macro like images and get a very interesting perspective when shooting this close. Not to mention that even the f4 aperture can provide beautiful background blur when we want to isolate our subject from the environment in this way. And speaking of background blur it's worth mentioning that the 50mm lens has a 9 blade aperture while the 17mm has a 7 blade aperture. Of course the f4 aperture is not the strongest in terms of background blur but as I said if we are close enough to the subject we can still separate it nicely from the background. In contrast the 50mm f2 beautifully blurs the background and provides a nice smooth area of blur. So let's summarize a bit and see what these two lenses are good for and who they might be suitable for. The 50mm lens is a universal focal length that can be capture most subjects so I can recommend it to almost anyone who wants a good basic lens for their full frame mirrorless camera. However what makes this lens unique in my opinion is its design. It feels feels great in the hands with a very robust metal body yet compact and small in size and balances well with modern mirrorless camera bodies. In addition we almost take it for granted that it has an incredibly quiet fast and accurate autofocus and its image quality is almost comparable to Sigma art lenses. All of this comes at a price of 639 USD which I think is a completely reasonable price and offers great value for the money. The 17mm lens is even more exciting than this. It also has the same premier exterior design as the other lenses in the i series but here compactness takes on next level. I especially felt this when using it with the gimbal and its size made it very easy to balance with the system and the whole setup is so light that it can be used with cheaper and more importantly lighter gimbals and stabilizers. In addition the aperture ring is a feature that once you try it you will never want to go back to anything else. Turning the ring on the lens is much faster than fiddling with the camera dials with one hand while holding the gimbal with the other one. I think the lens's other exciting feature is its close focusing point which can be used in a creative and exciting way. So at 599 USD I think this lens can be a great choice for anyone looking for a wide angle lens for either photo or video shooting. It's not the brightest lens but thanks to the ISO performance of modern cameras I think we can use f4 lenses indoors without any problem. But what do you think about the i-series Sigma lenses because I am in love with them. Would you choose the 17mm or the 50mm instead? Let me know in the comments, I'm curious about your opinion. That's all I wanted to say in this video, if you liked it or found it useful be sure to let me know in the form of a like, subscribe to my channel for more content like this and feel free to comment down below if you have any further question. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next video.